Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming a TBR. What? I have not filmed a TBR in such a long time. I think my last TBR was November. I don't know what happened, but around the time of november i just like kind of got in this slump where i didn't really want to be reading a lot i was just like doing other things and i don't know i just like didn't want to set up tbrs for myself and i think i've taken some time to not put pressure on myself to read and to really reevaluate how i want to balance life and booktube and reading and all as well with my other hobbies and then i was busy traveling and so i've kind of come to this conclusion that like i'm just gonna put less pressure on myself and make these videos because they're fun it's a side hobby for me not take it too seriously in 2019 I read like over 100 books which is great but like I don't have to do that nothing nobody says that I have to read 100 books I could read like five books and still be a reader because I love reading so I think I need to just kind of step back and realize like I'll just read when it works for me and not because I feel like I need to read a million books a month like a TBR of five or six books is fine that's doable that's achievable I also stopped listening to audiobooks just because like I really like listening to music um, on my commute and I just didn't want to give up that time listening to music that's just been what's catching my attention more like audiobooks I enjoyed them but they aren't my favorite form of reading I just do prefer physical reading and that's fine I gave them a try for a while and I do like them sometimes but it's just not my cup of tea so why force myself to read audiobooks to get in more books per month when like it's not something that like I necessarily want to be doing all the time so yeah, that means I'm gonna read less, but like, oh well, like who says I have to rush through all these books or like do this and do that? Like I think this is a bit like a self-imposed pressure and I think it's because that's how other people in the community operate or like the norm. And then, you know, you kind of like are existing in this community and adapt your behavior to what you see is like what everyone else is doing, which is unconscious and like it's fine, but I kind of sometimes need to take like a conscious step back and be like, okay, like I just need to do what works for me. So that being said, I do have a TBR of about maybe eight books, which is a little ambitious for this kind of these new rules that I've set up for myself, but I do think it's doable considering I'm like halfway through one of them. Yeah, and if I don't read them, I don't read them. Like it's really not the end of the world. These are just the books that are kind of on my radar right now and that I want to get to. So without further ado, let's just dive on it. The first book is Bone Criers Moon by Catherine Purity and this is an arc that was actually sent to me by the publisher so thank you so much to HarperCollins for sending this along to me. I'm really so interested in it and I'm actually at this moment it's March 1st I'm filming this about halfway through um, but since it's March and I still have 50% more to read it's going on my March TBR and especially because I didn't film a February TBR I really want to talk about this book because I'm halfway in and I'm absolutely just flying through it loving it enjoying it um, really good enemies to lovers romance like if you like enemies to lovers and you're like they're not enemies enough for me like please read this because they are literally trying to kill one another and it's fantastic so this is the start of a new duology and the bone criers ferry the souls of the dead from the land of the living to the afterlife this is their sacred duty and if they do not ferry the dead the souls will come and drain the light out of the living. However, this bone crier power requires sacrifice in order to become a farrier. A bone crier must perform a ritual where she lures her soulmate and then kills him. Bastian's father was killed by a bone crier and he was there to witness the event and so he's spent his whole life vowing revenge. Elise is set to ascend to the position of matriarch of her family of bone criers so she must start her ritual. Bastian's mission for revenge must wait as now his and Elise's lives are entwined in life and death. We also have a third perspective, Sabine, who is Elise's soft-hearted best friend and will do whatever she can to save Elise in this messed up situation. Really cool. It's based on the myth of La Dame Blanche. I think it's fantastic so far of what I've read of it and I highly suggest you guys pick this up. It is out March 3rd, which should be the day that this video goes up. So it's happy release day to this book. A lot of books out March 3rd. 
Which of course brings me to my next book and that is Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. This is The Eldest Curses book one. I have not read this yet. I've read every Shadowhunters book up to the point when this was released and now we're getting Chain of Gold and I need to get my butt into action so that I can read Chain of Gold which is one of my most anticipated books of the year. So, you know, Red Scrolls of Magic needs to be a priority of me. This takes place in between book three and book four, which is City of Glass and City of Fallen Angels in the Mortal Instruments series, which, you know, the Mortal Instruments, it's this very expansive universe of shadow hunters, which are humans that are descended from the angels that fight demons. The Red Scrolls of Magic follows Alec and his boyfriend, Magnus, and they are going on vacation in Europe after, you know, they have to deal with some stuff that happened in the Mortal Instruments. So now they're on this romantic getaway. However, there is a cult called the Crimson Hand that is bent on causing chaos around the world. And apparently Magnus accidentally started this cult as a joke back in the day. And so an old friend must find them and tell them to kind of deal with the situation. And this definitely ties in to all the other books. So I really want to read this. I really want to read more about Magnus and Alec, especially Magnus has always been one of my favorite characters, our favorite bisexual wizard, Alec. I didn't necessarily always like the way that his character was written, but as the books went on, I liked his character more and more, and I think that Cassandra Clare just found a better voice for him over time, because there is some like strife with Magnus and Alec in the later books that I like didn't like the way that Alec was acting, but I feel like, especially when we see them in The Dark Artifices, I really have grown to love him as a character. So I am excited to see now that she is you know, later on in her career going back and writing a younger Alec, but with this more mature writing style and stronger voice, I think will be fun to see. And I've heard great things about this book. And she also has a co-author on this book, which is um, an Asian man, which is great so that she can bring in someone with that representation to write this book with her. And I went to a Cassandra Clare signing last year for the release of Queen of Air and Darkness. And basically at the signing, someone asked a question um, and she talked about how she wanted to write this book, but publishers were worried that it wouldn't sell and she took a pay cut to write this. She didn't get paid as much as her other books, but she's like, you wanna know what? I wanted to write the story about this gay couple. And I think that it needs to be put out there. So I really commend her for that and I'm excited to get to this one. So you can probably guess what my next book will be. And that is Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, Robin Wasserman. So we follow brother Zachariah. If you know Shadowhunters, you probably know who brother Zachariah is, but um, if not, you, you'll you'll find out eventually. Okay. The synopsis for this book is one whole big spoiler. If you don't know anything about Shadowhunters, like just don't read the synopsis of this because you will be spoiled. <clears throat> but it basically ties together all of the different series. Oh yeah, my copy is signed, by the way. I got this at BookCon signed. The Shadow Market is a meeting place for all of the downworlders, which are like fairies, vampires, werewolves, all that stuff warlocks as well and they buy and sell illicit magical objects and we follow brother Zachariah throughout time it's different short stories set in the shadow market and i think we have characters from many of the different series so mortal instruments infernal devices dark artifices and now the lost hours which is what chain of gold is the first book in so yes i'm going to read this because i need to and you know what i miss Brother Zachariah. Also, there's these cool little illustrations here. Yeah, I just, I miss Shadowhunters books. They're so fun. They hold such a special place in my heart to me. My Shadowhunters shelf is exploding because there's no more space for all the books. It's kind of bled onto here. <sighs> the life, the life of a YA book lover. <laughs> you may be wondering, okay, what's next on your TBR? Also, if you don't know, I usually do my TBRs by saying the order in which I think I'm going to read these books. So that's that. When I was at ALA in January, I got my most prized possession, which is an early copy of Chain of Gold. Yes, I got an ARC. I stopped the Simon & Schuster booth and able to get one of the like seven copies that they had and I snagged it and I didn't read it before it came out. And you want to know what? That's okay. It happens. 
but this is now one of my most prized possessions. I just think it's a really great thing to have, you know, in my collection, an arc of a Shadowhunters book. I'm really, really excited about it. And they also had, as a giveaway, these little character cards for the characters in Chain of Gold featuring the official artwork. So we have Cordelia Carstairs, which she just seems like she's gonna be a badass, love her. And then we have James Herondale, Lucy Herondale, Thomas Lightwood, Matthew Fairchild, and Anna Lightwood. And I'm super excited about these because I just love having references for characters because I'm terrible, terrible at creating faces in my mind. So I can look at these and I can know what these characters look like. So, a chain of gold. And the tagline for this is love cuts deeper than any blade. Ooh. So this is a brand new series in the Shadowhunters world and it follows the children of the people in the Infernal Devices. Infernal Devices is probably my favorite of all the Shadowhunters series. Tessa Gray is probably my favorite, favorite Shadowhunters character. I just really relate to her on a very personal level. Like I feel like of all book characters that I've ever read about, she's the one that's most similar to me. Um, that series really means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read about her, I guess, later in her life. I think it will be really interesting to see how Cassandra Clare tackles that. Cordelia Carstairs um, has trained all of her life to be a shadow hunter, and she moves to London. When Cordelia travels to London, she runs into her childhood friends, James and Lucy Herondell, that have been raised in the London Institute. She is drawn to their world of glittering ballrooms and supernatural saloons. Cordelia must hide her secret love for James, who is sworn to marry someone else, but everything gets turned upside down when demon attacks devastate London. And her friends discover that a dark legacy has gifted them with incredible powers that comes with the true, true cruel price of being a hero. I mean, I've heard nothing but fantastic things about it and like, I just love the Shadowhunters world so, so much and I'm excited to see new characters. Sandra Claire just like excels at writing all these characters. Like there wouldn't be like 20 books in the series if it wasn't good. So I'm just gonna leave that at that. Once I get through all of that, it's time for the new Sarah J Mass book, Crescent City, number one, House of Blood and Earth. House of Earth and Blood? House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. This is her first adult book. I am pretty sure they are rebranding A Court of Thorns and Roses as an adult book because it started as new adult and then kind of shifted back to YA, but it is, the content is more on the adult side. And so for the newer book in the series, that's why they've released these new covers that look a little different. But this is her first book that is truly going to be released in the adult genre, and I'm very excited for it. And this is the story of the half-human, half fae half Bryce Quinlan, who works all day, parties all night, and has this perfect life until her best friend is murdered by a demon, leaving her alone. However, when the accused is behind bars and the crimes start again. Bryce is convinced that they do not have the right attacker and she finds herself at the heart of the investigation. Hunt Althar is a fallen angel who is enslaved to the archangels that he once attempted to defeat. And he is basically a hitman for the archangels. With a demon wrecking havoc in the city, he is offered an irresistible deal. Help Bryce find the murderer and his freedom will be within reach. But as they dig into the murder, they discover a dark power blazing in the city's underbelly. And yeah, sounds good. It's Sarah J Mass, so I'm gonna read it. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be the book that the overhyped book club, which is me, Karina, Kendra, and Majel, we are going to be reading this book in March. So keep an eye out for an announcement on more details for our live show, but I'm so excited to be doing a live show again. We took a little bit of a break because everyone's life was hectic. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a really, really good book to discuss and it's big and I can't wait. So, you know, I might not be able to get through all those books in March. They are a lot of heavy books, but like, I feel like I'm gonna fly through the Shadowhunters books because I love them so much. If I get through all of that, then I have three more books that I could potentially read. The first one is The Vanishing Deep by Astrid Schulte, which I've just been entranced by this book. I mean, look at this cover. It is gorgeous. It's different. It's a contemporary fantasy mystery. This takes place in a world of water and before I get started, I should mention that Penguin Teen kindly sent me this copy for an Instagram launch of the book. Um, it is out on March 3rd, which is today, so pick up your copy if you are interested. It is gorgeous, and Asher Schulte has this really unique mix of fantasy, contemporary, and mystery, so it's like a thriller fantasy. 
So Tempe lives in a world of water and there is this technology where you can revive a loved one for 24 hours in this research lab. Tempe spends her time scavenging for things in the water to earn enough money to revive her sister. And it's not to have a cheerful reunion, but because her sister died holding a secret and Tempe wants to know the secret of why her sister murdered their parents. However, once revived, Alicia has other plans. She doesn't want to spend her last day alive in a research lab being accused of a crime that she didn't commit. And so she persuades Tempe to break her out and they are hunted down by the researchers at this facility to keep the secret of the revivals from getting out and what happens if you are not back in the lab at the 24 hour mark. So I think this is, it's a fast paced mystery fantasy and I think it's going to be really, really interesting. I've never heard of a book like this and I just think it's going to be really cool and I really want to read it. <laughs> Next year we have The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones and this was an arc that was passed along to me by Stephanie from Shut Up and Read so thank you so much Stephanie for sending this my way and it's an adventure of a grave digger and a map maker. This one is a fan standalone fantasy that came out like in October I think and or September. I always was really interested in it but I had never gotten around to it and when Stephanie said she was getting rid of her copy I'm like I will take it I want to read it and so hopefully I get to this one soon. So Rin is a grave digger and she does this at for a living after her parents die and the thing is that the dead don't always stay dead and once they come rise from the grave they are known as bone houses and they are the result of a decades old curse. Ellis, an apprentice map maker with a mysterious past, comes to town. The corpses attack with a new ferocity. And so Rin and Ellis embark on a quest to stop these corpses and they will have to face some long forgotten magic for the answers that they seek. Yeah, I just, these standalone fantasies are always really cool and I think it'll be a quick read. It's only 300 or so pages, but I was always really drawn by the cover and the description. So I uh, want to get to this. And the last book on my TBR, I think this is probably the limit of what I will be able to get to this month, and this is Don't Call the Wolf by Alexandra Ross. This is an arc that I got at ALA. Please check out my ALA haul. I hauled like 50, over 50 arcs that I got at the American Library uh, Midwinter Conference in Philadelphia, and I also have a vlog, which is just chaos. Check it out. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I got so, so many books. So I'm trying to work my way through them and read them the month before they come out. So this one comes out in April, so hopefully I will get to it in March. The Baxes disappear into a forest of shape-shifting queens, bone-chilling monsters, and delicious dark magic in this richly imagined YA fantasy debut. Oh, it's a debut. I'm just gonna read the back because I think this sums it up better, um, but it is inspired by the Polish fairy tale of the Glass Mountain, and it's a standalone. I have never heard of that fairy tale, so it's kind of cool. I love things based in fairy tales. I love fairy tales. I actually took a writing seminar on fairy tales in college so we like analyze where fairy tales started from read like the beginning fairy tales from a lot of you know the old classic writers like grim brothers perot all them it was really interesting so i have a soft spot for fairy tales <laughs> okay when the golden dragon descended on the castle of kamina it brought with it a horde of monsters ren the forest's young queen is slowly losing her battle against them until she rescues lucas lucas the last survivor of heroic brigade of dragon slayers and they strike a deal she will help him find his youngest brother who vanished into her forest as long as lucas promises to slay the dragon but promises are all too easily broken yeah so this is from harper team epic reads i think it will be really cool i don't know if i've ever read a polish inspired book <clears throat> so a side note is i've started this thing where i am bringing my kindle on the subway because instead i'm not listening to audiobooks and trying to read like a kindle book i don't always read though if I like don't have a spot to sit or whatever so I have like a book that I'm working my way very slowly through and that is Grave Maidens by Kelly Kuhn. This is just kind of like for me to like just read really quickly while I'm on the subway or if I just have time to like have my kindle. So this is a book about two sisters and one of them is selected to be a grave maiden and follow the king into death. Everyone sees it as an honor except for Nene who knows that it is actually a death sentence and so she tries to stop her sister from following the king into the grave by becoming a healer in the palace and healing him but then you know more stuff is up so i'm working my way very slowly through that one um when i say very slowly like very slowly because i only have like not that much time on the subway each day but it's just something to do 
in the morning and evening on my way to and from work. I don't think I'll get to this, honestly, after this pile of books, but I do also have an arc of Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan. I did love Wicked Saints by her, and I'm really excited for this sequel. It is Malachi's book, and I think I'll probably get to this one in April around when it comes out, and we'll probably do a live show for the Overhyped Book Club. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that I have this and that I love it and I am so excited to read it. So thank you for watching my TBR. I'm so happy I was finally able to make one because it's been so freaking long. Um, I'm excited to get to these books. I'm excited to kind of have some reading goals, but also am more at peace with how I'm structuring like my life and reading in general um, and not putting too much pressure on myself. So please leave a comment down below if you are reading any of these books these month this month what books you're looking forward to reading this month just like say hello say hi chat with me like anything you want to say just say it in the comments uh yeah so have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one Bye.